To do a quick recap, unfortunately this goes further, it gets taken away from those that are with a problem, i.e. a doctor and her husband looking to spread this Baha'i religion through Waterford. They have gotten mixed up in this unfortunately when they tried to get out this up and they kicked off. This could have been proven, could have also been disproven to see if I was like lying or whatever, but no effort was made. My ex, who is still in this religion with the kids, and she's eager to please these two people, has like done actions where she should be jailed realistically. But there's a solicitor in Waterford who should be struck off. Another employee of Waterford Hustle, two employees of Waterford Hustle, actually, that should be struck off. They should definitely be investigated at the very least and then struck off. Not to mention the TD and various other people that were lured into this. To make this as convoluted as possible in an effort to prevent this from being exposed. This TD in question assumes he's in the position to waive his glorified sense of entitlement and have other people's wrongdoings excused. In reality he is also mixed up in this and by making this as big as possible it makes it virtually impossible to have it investigated. Is it realistic that I could make all this up? It all fits into a timeline and it's all supported by documentation actions and most importantly the lack of action regarding such serious matters some groups fed certain information and told people to spread it throughout waterford but not feed it to the girls for whatever reason they may feel it was to spread some kind of public warning regarding me so they feel they were doing the right thing this was to lure as many people into this as possible as the more people involved in this major fuck up the more unlike the more unlikely it was of ever being investigated and that was the real reason of luring as many people in as possible obviously there's the local hypocrites ever keen to get involved in waterford this unfortunately is just a waterford right one it hides certain issues regarding themselves by running with the hounds as they say and secondly they realize they got involved in something and they can't really back out of it some of the things that have been done to try and silence me like are beyond corrupt and criminal like from a detective swapping the sums with local criminals after i had been assaulted this was done on behalf of this td this detective now is after jeopardizing his career in an effort to please this td to mr henry halligan's actions regarding my late mother's passing and the bishop after apologizing for my experiences with mr henry halligan who printed off the email that i sent privately to a priest and he passed it back to I was actually speaking about Mr. David Conlan and, and he passed it back to Mr. Conlan. I was also mentioning actually on a separate matter about someone in Tuslet and the corruption from one play. So that should be investigated. So that should be investigated how it got from one person to another person back to another person. When Mr. Conlan is calling for transparency in the HSC in Tuslet, like, like someone needs to get an explanation of how this email which speaks about corruption in Tussle, was actually given back behind the backs of everyone. I think that should be investigated because we have Mr. Conan on the radio like talking about the lack of transparency in the HSC and here's here we have information that somehow has been passed back to the HSC regarding corruption. Like, should that not be like publicly spoken about and publicly out? And rather than the bishop do what's right, remove Mr. Henry Halligan. from his position as he broke the trust of the church and this is this is really well advised it's not really kind of about me anymore if i'm being honest because it's actually getting so far and so corrupt it's a kind of of public interest kind of it's in the interest of the public to have this looked into because these people are corrupt beyond words like, like is henry halling going to get his actions yet again covered up through a war and we all know what i'm talking about this is going on for years with mr halligan and i said i was going to like add letters and documentation to support everything that i said like and i was hoping to like do it after the timeline because i didn't want to kind of bog down these videos so i'm going to add some paperwork there now so there's a letter there, you can see it down now and it's from the bishop i know you can see it on the camera there. it's from the bishop i just read it out quickly dear mr healy thank you for your letter my secretary here showed me your emails going back some time now I am very sorry that you have had these experiences in Ballybeg. I am especially sorry to hear about your mother's passing. She may, may she rest in peace. I will bring your complaint to the attention of the person mentioned and hopefully find a resolution. 
Happy Christmas. Your sincerely, Alphonsus Cullinan. So basically, um, he acknowledges my experiences. My, my experiences was a uh, Mr. Henry Halligan printing off my email and passing it back. And that to get that letter back to the bishop, it took me nine emails sent to the bishop. Where they, basically he wasn't being given the emails. They say his secretary was withholding those emails. Same thing with Henry Halligan done out in the church. But uh, there you have the bishop apologising for whatever Henry Halligan was after doing. Basically acknowledging what he's after doing. So why is he still employed? Why is he still out in that church? Yet again we have the church siding with political influence. Which is what's had to happen. If someone in the political positions had to pull his strings to keep him out in that church. And let's be honest about it. Like, the real truth of it is they're worried about like the whole domino effect of what really might be said afterwards if people really start pointing their finger at him. Like I won't be letting that go in the story. And he like I should I shouldn't have to be requested. He should be removed. He's at the breaking the trust of the church. So he should he should be removed. And if the bishop can apologize for my experiences, he, he could step in and remove him. But what he done then is he sent me another email afterwards because he tried to ignore me for months. And the bishop basically said that it was a parish issue and basically put it back on the priest. He basically had the balls to get rid of Henry Ali because some of the political influence had kind of stuck their nose in as usual and kept him in the job. The amount of small time drug dealers that I would have known through the years from my own like growing up who I know firsthand to be hypocrites, to be getting involved in my issues like I have no interest in speaking about these people, as many of them know who I am referring to. All I say is you're in no position to be pointing your finger at me. The failure and duty of care by Waterford Council and Waterford Garda is almost at a stage where it's difficult to even explain. This was all premeditated. This psychologist employed by Waterford Tussler and her husband, also a psychologist, both recruiting for this Baha'i religion, views this as one big chess game and thinks nothing of destroying someone's life. I'm just going to back, go back there, and as I said, I didn't want to add too much paperwork. But this is a letter from Tram Wardy TV. I don't know if you can see it there. So this is, people were asking me, why didn't I make a complaint about this psychologist if he was kind of like recruiting people from the classroom? And I said, I did make a complaint, right? And I was told then afterwards, because I was ignored more or less with the complaint, but I was told the person I made a complaint to was actually a friend of the psychologist out in Tram Wardy. And this is what they said to me. First of all, they photocopied, I don't know if you can see this because the camera's kind of shit, but they photocopied the, the letter. They wrote a date on it, but they, uh, they wrote the 15th to the 2nd, 2016, and that was written in a biro, and then it was photocopied, almost to make it look like, and this was sent out, sorry, in 2021, so it was to make it look like, and this was posted out in 2021, so it was to make it look like it was after being, wrote in 2016 and all the guidelines were followed but as i said to him at the time because i wrote back to him in 2021 i said sure anyone could have wrote that i simply wrote the date with the boy wrote photocopied it and sent it out which is what i believed is what happened and i asked him i said seeing as you were able to send me out a photocopy but if you didn't mind can i see the original because that will show that like all correct guidelines and protocols were followed and that the document is, is actually from 2016 and it hadn't been just li literally written in 2021 and posted out to me and I was told basically to stop contacting the place so you can make your own mind up about this but this is what this is what they said anyway in, in parts of the letter Pat was informed of your two concerns and replied a right following interest from learners he offered information on the Baha'i faith. This occurred outside the classroom during the breaks during the conversation. Now, are we to believe that, right? The students of the classroom inquired about this obscure religion that him and his wife just happened to be recruiting for, the Baha'i faith. Now, what are the odds on that, like, realistically? And for us to bring, us up, bring it up, he, he would have had to bring it up first, which would show that he was bringing up this religion that he was recruiting for. Because he just admitted it there himself. And they tried to say then that and he tried to say then that it was on his lunch break. Well he would have been paid on his lunch break because the lunch breaks were held in the Tramwall ETV. So he would have still had to follow the guidelines and the correct conduct and protocol. So, so like 
and the code of ethics. And plus the fact he was on the premises of Tram ETB. So like this is very much still a Tram ETB problem. So basically they're trying to pass it off saying that because it was on his lunch break that basically it was nothing to do with him. And like they try and say that like that, that the students brought up this religion that him and his wife just happened to be like recruiting for show all the odds and that. That's a ridiculous statement. Like. And this was accepted as so to try and get <clears throat> so to try and get someone to believe that like that the students in the classroom like brought up this religion is ridiculous. Like. Let's be honest about it. There's no other word to put it like. No other way to put it. He clearly brought this up and that that's what caused the students to inquire about it because he was the one trying to lure people into this. And not only that, it's just like it just happens to be the religion that him and his wife are recruiting for. But this is what I looked into. I as I said I received this letter in 2021 and it was written in pen um the 15th to the 2nd 2016 and what happened is they photocopied the letter to make it look more real it was posted out to me in 2021 i asked i explained i look this looked like it could have been wrote any time and it was just written in pen and if i could see the original if they were able to send me out a copy of it they would have still had the original so it shouldn't have been an issue of me seeing the original and plus the fact they would have shut me up they could have then told me to basically clear off but they didn't they told me to stop writing as soon as i mentioned that that this could have been written on a like recent date and simply photocopied and sent out they told me that they don't contact me ever again so you can make your own minds up on on that situation i spoke about this woman who was the husband of this person who was also who she was the main recruiter him and her but she was the kind of main one she's a subcontractor by water for tussler i explained how she was a uh, involved in a case years prior that uh, I was a witness in so it was like the code of ethics went out the window with her but that gives you a window into the ego of this person like, where she believes like she can do whatever she wants and against protocol she kept the guards out of that case I wanted the guards involved in the case she decided to keep the guards out of it and the case was all kind of quietly swept under the carpet because this woman had this is the ego of this person that she thinks she can do this kind of stuff and this is why this woman needs to be investigated and if not unless even to just prove that i'm lying and if i'm lying then you can hold me accountable but if i'm not lying and this woman is still employed what for tussle or her husband like is still like doing this kind of stuff and instead now they get to hide behind the td who's hiding behind his party and then you have like girls getting involved in it there on behalf of the td let's be honest about it then you have criminals getting involved in it like because they've been approached by girls and detectives and all this kind of stuff it's getting ridiculous like if i if i'm embellishing the truth or if i'm lying or anything like that you can hold me accountable there's defamation laws in place like like you have a solicitor who purposely like basically destroyed my case for a year and a half in that in that court in waterford court and she basically got her actions covered up because she was able to turn to her local td yet again who stuck his fucking nose into my business yet again and cover this up i appeal this to the ombudsman and i let them take it over from lsre i can't speak too much about it but i won't be letting it go is the system there to defend the citizens of ireland like, and uphold like the system of, of which of which is kind of supposed to abide by or is it there to defend the likes of these people like and we'll only ever know by having an investigation and by not having an investigation they've defended these people and they've hidden their actions and by investigating this it, it would give a clear deterrent for this not to happen again and it would show people basically who was boss and no one is above the law and no one is above the system and when i'm talking about like a td like we all know about tds like pulling strings to have people in the house and kind of like or a system to kind of getting their disability and stuff and i'm not on about that I'm on about like a TD pulling strings in an effort to like stop complaints going ahead, complaints which are true. Like like this is criminal, like this is beyond kind of like this is not just pulling strings like at this stage, like this is like he should be held accountable. One hundred percent he should be held accountable. Not only should he be held accountable, he should be removed because it's an example of with of what's going on in Ireland today and is what needs to be stamped out. As many of you know anyway from the local gossips in Waterford anyway, like, um, my beautiful wife 
she you have a beautiful baby in six weeks time i won't don't even want to get further into that but as usual she's a target now for this crowd like just like my late mother was a target for this crowd just like me wedding became a target for this crowd but that shows you like that shows you how venomous and nasty these people are and why they should be called out and they should and, they, and an example of these people should be made instead of hiding behind tds and hiding behind corrupt fucking garrows like it's it's deplorable to be honest with you and this is why i'm only saying this about my wife being pregnant otherwise i, I won't even bring it up but like judging by like what they done to me mother like like nothing is off limits with these people when they think about it there's other private issues going on i don't want to get into it but i'll have to take a step back for a couple of weeks but like i won't be giving up so before silent for a couple of weeks that's all it really is if you look back at either my posts or videos you will see i've never changed what was ever said or what i've alleged there's proof there's documentation why hasn't this been investigated realistically they looked into this already and they seen that i was telling the truth and now rather than look into it then they'll have to investigate it they're just trying to simply ignore me i'll give an example now what for council i applied for under the freedom of information act for me file we all know about two members of waterford council had they got caught searching my mother's bedroom and this was covered up by another member of waterford council also a member of Sinn Féin and a crony of mr conan but he, he covered up the actions of these two other clowns who got caught searching my mother's so i applied obviously for all the all my emails and stuff because i wanted to obviously i wanted to make a complaint but this is what this is what Waterford Council sent me. I don't know if you can see that. See how thin that is? That's what Waterford Council sent me out as my file from Waterford Council. This is my co this is my copy of the file. So you can see how much that's actually been edited down. Like. So they removed that many emails from the file because like, of what was in the email. So that like that alone is so incriminating in itself. Like what, like what was in those emails that they had to remove? I'll tell you what was in. The emails was in. Not only was searching my mother's and getting caught searching my mother's, but they put a neighbour directly across me up from my mother. I'll speak about this further on, but uh, myself and that neighbour had been re had been separated by Waterford Council previously over the actions of this neighbour. And to try and provoke me and get at my mother, they put this neighbour right in next to my mother again. So where's the failure and where's the duty of care here yet again? I'll speak about this further on. I just wanted to show some documentation to show that what I'm saying is true. And as I said, when I get to the end of all this timeline, I will I will explain all this paper because I have a good bit of paper and I'll go through it and I'll support every part of my case. I will continue with my videos until all of this is out. I'm aware I don't always come across good on camera and I find this hard to talk about and I can't pretend it does not bother me because it does. After I have recorded this one, Sorry. I will be forwarded on to the Minister of Justice and GSOC Commission and the Tussle for Tussle to investigate this and what has gone on. Like, they would have to acknowledge that they broke protocol. So they're not going to investigate. They prefer to just kind of ignore it. And this goes for many organisations, you know, to be honest with you. Like the fact, the fact that I have to feel threatened because I want to tell the truth and they don't want me telling the truth because the truth reflects so badly on these people and the, what they've done and how they all like, like how they all one followed another basically saying well I got this off of you because this was spread about him you gave it to me you gave it to me and that's basically it all goes back then but no one will actually say well actually this is how I got it and that's what needs to be done but it's gone it's gone so far past that there now they're trying to get as many people in, involved in this to cover their actions. The push to ignore me in the hope that this may be covered up and forgotten about. All of this can be proven. This is hence the reason they won't even try and disprove me or hold me accountable. Over the next few weeks, I'm awaiting word on something else. Kind of for another professional to get involved in being honest with you. And as this is becoming a human rights issue, like, and that's basically it because it's getting so corrupt there now, it is a human rights issue. Like, I'm supposed to follow protocol, 
and due process while all around me everything is corrupt and everyone is corrupt like why should i follow the due process protocol when they don't follow it but i will follow it and if needs be and i don't say this statement like with a with a light heart like am i going to be pushed because i will go on a hunger strike if needs be and i know that's not a light statement and i don't throw it around too easily but if i'm pushed into it i will Because I'll do whatever I need to bring awareness to this because I'm not letting it go. And to have to go to such drastic lengths, like that in itself is an issue. I have to, as I said, I have to exhaust all other avenues before I can go through certain kind of issues regarding court. But if that court situation becomes blocked in the high court for me, I'll have no option but to go on hunger strike and I will. And we'll find out what we actually, the Irish system is designed. Is it to protect the citizens or is it to protect a few bad apples and their overinflated sense of entitlement? Hopefully some form of investigation and if it was up to me, a transparent investigation needs to be done. Because people need to know what these people are like. Especially like the solicitor. Like, there's people now going down and applying that solicitor. They don't know the actions of that solicitor who like, should have been struck off realistically and they're going down blindly taking her on the family law case and, and because she was able to run to like a certain TD in the town and have like strings pulled and have her actions pulled and have her actions covered up she basically remains in her job like there's just so much of that kind of stuff there's, like water for toast like, there's a history <coughs> there's a history of like how would you say corruption basically in water for toast if I'm being honest with you and it's long overdue coming out. Like we have an investigation of a charity every couple of years it comes up, it's been investigated. If you notice, it's investigated every couple of years, but it's also swept under the carpet every couple of years. Now, why do you think that is? Because the same people are in the same positions to cover this up repeatedly. That's why. And it's only about getting these people out and having a transparent and having and having an independent person placed in that can stop these people influencing certain situations. I actually worked in that charity 20 years ago and I've seen some weird shit up and I've offered like statements and I've spoken about this and I actually worked up the twice with two different buildings. I didn't work in the charity itself. I worked actually as a builder for a, a long time up there and then um, there was lots of weird going on up there and I could say really more about this but legally I can't but I'll just say there's people up there that, that were aware of what was going on and they've been lauded and applauded rather than held accountable I'll just leave it at that I speak about this now as I said because like my wife is pregnant and it's a concern that will be put on to her like it was put on to me mother and like, that's how nasty this crowd is and as I said if it comes to it I will genuinely go to the whole hunger strike extremes and like obviously it's not something I want to do but like if I'm pushed into it I will do it and the reason I'm giving like notice of it there now I want everyone to know like including like Minister of Justice that like it's a last resort for me but as I'm going on through this through nine years it's a case I haven't because there's no other recourse for me I'm, I'm going to try and bring it to the high courts if this fails I will definitely do the whole hunger strike thing and we'll see where that will take me I repeat, I've not defamed, I've not threatened anyone, and I've only ever spoken the truth in any of my videos. So if anyone want to say that I'm threatening or defaming them, like, like bring legal action against me, and I'll talk, I don't, I'd gladly talk about this in the courtroom. I spoke about it, I signed over on my passports to Tussle a couple of years ago, basically to show that I, I've not died. And uh, they were basically real, uh, they were basically used in an unbelievable manner, like so illegal. Like I won't get into this because we've gotten into another videos. But um, my email, all my emails were being read basically, and I suspected this anyway. And this was going on for a while anyway, so I changed to another person's email with permission, obviously, of course. And I just want to talk about this because I suspected that this email was being read as well because I, I fed information through this email through a certain party, and basically. It was exposed as I was I was proven right basically. So I just want to talk about this right. Sunday the fourteenth of August, I had a detective knock at the door. 
another new detective, he knocked to give me his email. I asked what that was for. He said if I had anything to say regardless of the whole situation. I said I didn't and I've been publicly saying anything that I did need to say online. I found this very odd. Over the last few years I was using an email which was hacked. As I explained previously, many important emails were hacked and deleted from my account. The last two years I was using another person's email, with their permission of course. Despite this email and address being in another person's name, and despite GDPR privacy rights, I suspected this email was also being hacked. As we know now, when it comes to certain parties in Waterford, breaching GDPR rights seems to be the norm in Waterford. As I said, I suspected this email was being hacked, but any emails I sent were either being intercepted or read. This this given numerous parties quite an advantage as they knew what my approach was and what I was saying and what I was alleging. I've been sending emails on a weekly basis. For years actually I send emails on a weekly basis to politicians, garda, solicitors, organisations supposed to be in place to assist anyone with legal issues. I have suspected these emails from this person's account was being read. I was writing some very incriminating stuff in these emails, all true, all very, very serious regarding corruption in Waterford. As I said, it was all true. I also added the names of these high profile people. I did this purposely as I knew they could not say, we know what you wrote in, in these emails because they were after illegally hacking into them. So I really pulled no punches in what I was saying. And this would have caused great concern and the thoughts of what I was saying to be made public was like really, really an issue. I alleged a politician who was using a small time group of local drug dealers to increase votes when needed. Garda doing the bidding to protect certain high profile people in Waterford and also mixing with local criminals. I spoke about how local criminals in Waterford were given certain special privileges by Waterford Council and by Waterford Garda. On behalf of this TD, I spoke about how a person who allegations of sexual misconduct for years gets his actions covered up repeatedly and that this may infringe on the family's name, basically. Like I spoke about all of this theme because I knew they couldn't turn around and say, look, we've read your emails because we've hacked into them. So basically I was allowed to say what I want in the emails, which I did. So this was a serious, serious issue. My suspicions were confirmed in one of these emails which I had sent purposely and they showed me my emails were in fact being read. I changed my email for a third time over the last few months. I won't say any more than that but I was getting some legal assistance through this. I was getting some legal assistance through other avenues. I don't want to speak too much about the legal assistance I'm getting. I'm just going to, I, I just have to wait a while on that. Between some of the legal remarks I had been making and the whole failure and duty of care is the correct legal approach regarding this corruption and me talking about lodging filings in the High Court against the state showed the Gardaí and others involved I was in contact with someone other by some other means. This combined with the slowing down of my use of the other two email addresses which were hacked, they eventually put two and two together and realised I had another source of assistance and the efforts to suppress this in Waterford was at risk, which is what was being done. As I said, Sunday the 14th of August, which is roughly two weeks ago, 2022, a new detective knocked at my door, offered me his email. I took it. I had no intention of emailing them. Why would I? They have no interest in assisting me. They have only concern in assisting their own cover-up of this high-profile TD, who I've proven to be a glorified liar. It's just my opinion. I suspected this detective was only trying to get my new email and this is only my opinion. Then on Saturday the 27th of August, which would only be a couple of days ago, I get a knock at the door again, the same detective, asking why I never emailed him. I said, why would I email you? If you wanted to add something new to what's happening. I said, like what, my car being vandalised for the third time or the neighbour above us who's like, or 31 months now banging the ball over our heads purposely. So what would be the point in emailing you? I've said everything that I had to say. As I, as I said, as I said, I suspected he was trying to get my new email. Me speaking aside Waterford was a major issue over what I was actually talking about.
And I don't mean like I was informing on people in Waterford or wanting any of that. I was talking about the corruption in Waterford. As many know, I'm saying some very serious stuff that should be like investigated. The difference being I'm calling for a transparent investigation while they try and hide. I said I had nothing to say. And anything I did say, I put it up online. I had wrote a letter last week to the Chief Superintendent about my unhappiness with the guard of covering up this person who had assaulted me. As I said in I think I said in the last previous video, I kind of predicted that this was all going to be covered up because the potential of this person like basically squealing on other people was always a risk. And the guards would have known like if you push him far enough he's gonna turn around and point a finger at us. And that's exactly what happened. He wasn't aware of us after sending this letter up. So you have to wonder who sent him down and what for. Because if his superiors didn't send him down to like give me his email or try and get my email up. What was he doing at my door? He asked had I spoken with my solicitor. I said I had and I'm waiting on word from my barrister. This is true. He asked me if I, if I would put this in writing and email it on to him. I asked why. He said I just to have it sent on. So clearly he was here to try and get my email. I did send on my position on an email. Obviously I used the old hacked email because I wasn't going to send on my new email. But there you go again. Looking to have my email so I can be hacked into it again. And that's just my opinion. So I'd be foolish to drop my guard at this stage and trust any of these people. Because basically a lot of them are kind of just covering for each other and being honest with you. And the real reason he was at the door was for whatever reason was to get me to send an email up there. And they were basically they're trying to get the new email. They've, they're after realising there and now that I'm in touch with someone legally. And that this is not in any of the other two email addresses so they know I have another email address. So they're like desperate to get this and find out what I mean, what's been said. They're hoping to try and suppress this in Waterford, which they've done. They've done a good job of doing this for years. And obviously I keep pushing and I keep pushing and I won't let it go. And... Hopefully I won't have to come to the kind of drastic lengths that I will, but if needs be, I will go to the drastic lengths that I have to. If you notice over the cat or if you notice over the course of the last few months of how like a lot more toxic this has got like in the net because they know basically that I'm not gonna just suddenly give up. Like I'm nine years into this now and I'm gonna just suddenly just walk away from all this. As I said, like like the issue with me mother and stuff, like I'm I'd rather die than let that go. It's as simple as that. I want this investigated and like if I can get nowhere through the courts with this, I will go on hunger strike and it's not something I want to do, but like it's something that I feel that much about that I will do it. And I'm sure these people think that they can call my bluff if I do have to come to this, but like I suppose we'll see in due due course. People will be aware of the last few months of a certain T D constantly on the radio. Like the wind can change and he's on the fucking radio talking it like he has to have something to say just to keep himself just to keep himself relevant realistically is what this is because of the stuff that I'm saying he has to kind of keep himself in the public eye and keep himself keep himself relevant. You don't see any other TDs constantly on the radio talking about stuff. He's basically trying to keep his squeaky clean image somewhat clean and uh what do they call it? A damage limitation. That's basically what's been done here. He's trying to like basically play it down so he's relevant and in the public eye. And I'm not letting this go. He stuck his nose into my business, and like, why should I be? In, why should I be forced to let this go? We have Helen McEntee now, like, yet again changing more legislation to push this through and push that through. And I understand the guard may need more powers, like, and the whole GDPR things, but. She needs to lead by example now and show some kind of transparency regarding like TDs pulling strings. And as I said, it's not about having people housed or like helping people like that are applying for disability. Like there's no one objecting to that. I'm on about TDs like that are pulling strings and having like complaints of corruption that are true, like covered up. Like this is a serious issue. And not only that, like if like there's accusations of sexual misconduct like this should totally be like investigated and not covered up and any person that covers this kind of stuff up like they're as bad as the person that are involved in it and they should be held accountable as well 
you can make up your own mind on why this detective was so eager to like have me send him an email all of a sudden. I'll be uploading this so the detective can read this if he wants like all the other videos that I've been putting up. And even my last video where I spoke about the phone call with the detective, you, you see you can see in here clearly like the holes in that. Like I haven't altered that, that phone call. That's exactly like how it went. And you see like the pure bullshit that I had to listen to in that phone call. And it was just lie after lie after lie. And as I said, I'll be forwarding on this video now to the Minister of Justice. I'll be sending it on to GSOC. I'll be sending it on to kind of the powers that be, basically. And hopefully I won't have to kind of do the whole kind of hunger strike thing like in a couple of months down the road. But if it needs to be, I, like, I guarantee you I will do it. And I want the Minister of Justice and all these people to know that like I like tried to prevent it from getting that far in the first place. But I was left with no option because you are more keen on covering up the actions of a handful of bad apples. And that's some example to anyone that's getting involved in politics and stuff that like this is potentially what you're getting into. I, for one, won't be tiptoeing around this anymore. As I said, I have other things and other people now to be thinking of at the present. These people think that they can destroy someone's life and harass their family if they try to fight it. Look look at how low they steeped it. Look at the levels that they steeped it. And then therefore they try and push me out. Like, like It wasn't just me, like. It was all people around me, people that I loved and loved ones around me who do not know one, but these people became targets simply to try and get at me. Like that's how corrupt the situation is, and this needs to be investigated. And at the end of the day, like if I'm lying, you can hold me accountable, sure. So where's the harm in investigating this and holding me accountable if I'm lying? Because this is what you're saying that I'm lying, obviously. But yet I'm supporting more and more documentation that shows that I'm not lying, I'm actually telling the truth. And this is going to get bigger and bigger because I'm not letting it go. And as I said, if I need to go down the whole hunger strike route, which is something I don't want to do, but there's only so much of this I can do, like banging my head off a wall basically, and I'm doing it for nine years. So in the future, if I need to, I will address this through that, and in the hope that it will bring some kind of attention to this. As I said, I have to be concerned now about my wife and other issues in my family and stuff, kind of like, so I have to deal with this kind of situation I have to deal with that situation and be sure that that goes okay. So I might be quieting down on the videos, but I'm just simply thinking of other people first. But I'll be back and I'll be making more videos when the time is right. And as I said, hopefully I won't have to do these drastic measures like the looks of a hunger strike and stuff. But like, sometimes you have to do what you have to do. So I'll leave it at that there now. And hopefully I've spoken a little bit more clearly. Waterford Guardi, you need to stop covering up for corrupt TDs 